Hello and welcome to the Genuine Learning Blog. My name is Melissa Galasso and I hope many of you were like us and got to enjoy a lovely week off last week, but we are back from our wellness week and ready to talk about the second quarter of 2023. It was a lighter quarter, uh, so from April to June, we didn't see super ton of activity, but there were a handful of things that we need to be aware of, uh, starting with the FASB uh, standards. And so FASB did issue their conceptual framework update for the reporting and entity. Um, this was something that they had previously uh, proposed to really define what is the entity that we are reporting under and uh, talks about things um, like whether consolidation or all these different uh, approaches are appropriate. Um, and so gave us a nice little definition of what is the reporting entity. Um, they also put out a proposal on purchased financial assets, and this is really in response to ASU 2016-13, which introduced the CECL option. Um, and one of the things that they had is if you are purchasing an asset, you had to evaluate whether there was more than insignificant deterioration in credit and whether you had purchased uh, what they call PCD, purchased credit deteriorated assets. Um, and so there were two models, whether there was or was not. And people came back and said, that's a lot. Um, it's very complex. Uh, can we simplify this? And so there is a proposal out there to require all acquired financial assets um, to, with um, for, with limited exceptions always, to follow just the existing uh, gross-up approach as they go through it. So um, that would be a streamlining of the CECL model. Uh, for some entities, they haven't adopted the CECL model yet. They'll adopt it in December. But for public entities, uh, they have already adopted. So that would be a change in practice for them. Uh, GASB also approved their implementation guide. They voted on it, um, but it didn't get issued until uh, earlier this week, or actually probably late last week, if I remember correctly, one of the two. Uh, and so we do have an implementation guide, but just didn't make it out before the end of the quarter, but it was approved, uh, but it is available now for those of you who would like to go look. Uh, there is a really interesting question on SPEDA's subscription-based IT arrangements that we highly recommend you take a look at. And then the AICPA did not issue anything new, but they did propose an ethics standard regarding new and revised definitions related to public interest entities. We previously done a blog on this to explain uh, why they're doing this and um, some of the impact of, of going through this. It's not really for the audit side of the house, it's for the other engagements uh, that are done under the AICPA standards for these public entities. And so uh, you can take, uh, take a look at that previous blog. So as you can see, uh, Q2 was pretty uh, slow. Uh, there is a lot going on. GASB continues to work on their larger models, like their financial reporting model and revenue expense recognition. Uh, FASB has been doing a lot of post-implementation review and working through a couple other projects. Uh, and AICPA did meet uh, with all of their committees recently. So uh, we're just sort of in the middle of uh, things. And so a lighter Q2 is not a bad thing. Many of us are very busy this time of year. Uh, so hopefully you get a little bit of a nice slowdown as we go through. So that is a wrap on this week's blog, and we hope to see you on a future blog. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.